Hey hustlers, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jasmine, aka Jazz Hustles, and I am a 20 year old Amazon seller. I started selling in the beginning of last year and I'm still going at it. As you guys can tell by this title today, I'm gonna to be telling you how I was able to make six figures in sales my first year selling on Amazon as a beginner. No experience at all. I was literally just a Cracker Barrel server and I just wanted to make more money online. Six figures in sales in my first year as a beginner is something that I definitely would not expect to accomplish. I just wanna let you guys know of five little tips that helped me scale my business. But you guys know that I love getting straight to business, so make sure to like it up, subscribe for more, and let's get to this video. Okay, so first things first, consistency. I may sound a little cliche and I know a lot of people and a lot of successful people say, you know, you wanna work hard, be consistent, but you actually really do have to be consistent when it comes to this business because the more money that you put in, the more that you're gonna make. The more time you invest in this business, the more you're going to make and that's how you're going to succeed. A lot of you will ask me, how am I able to scale my business? And that's one main thing that I tell people all the time, consistency, 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 also persistency. Anything with NC, you gotta apply it to your business, honestly. The beginning of me selling on Amazon, you know, I was making whatever money, you know, like a thousand dollar profit, a uh, two thousand dollar profit here and there, you know, smaller amounts of money that doesn't really mean I can completely, you know, disregard and quit my last job. But eventually when I started seeing more like, you know, um, consistent sales, that's when I was actually spending more time on the actual business. As you guys don't know, I worked two jobs when I was a beginner Amazon seller in the beginning of last year, 2023. And I worked at Cracker Bro and I worked at Ulta, the makeup store. And I decided to quit Ulta my second month selling on Amazon because I just not had enough time to really focus on my business and, you know, eventually my sales did start getting a little more higher and higher and of course i knew that the last risk for me to take was to quit my last job but i was also a little hesitant because it was like you know one thousand two thousand dollar profit that isn't as you know well to live especially in miami so i decided to keep going keep going and then my fifth month i made about how much was it like four thousand dollar profit and seven thousand dollars revenue and i just decided to take that leap and you know focus more on my business so i quit my last job, Cracker Barrel, and I just, you know, never looked back. And it's funny because my manager, uh, I think like a few months ago, he had asked me if I'm ready to, you know, come back on the team. And I'm like, <laughs> mm, sorry, no. <laughs> yeah, so I think consistency is really important. I don't think I know consistency is really important. And let's say for instance, you are not in that, you know, scenario where you literally cannot quit your job. You have to, you know, put in 40 hours a week. I definitely understand, but you have to try and find time for that. You have to try and find time for your business. If not, then it's never gonna get done. You're never going to end up quitting your job. And that's pretty much it with that. I don't think I would be able to have as much success if I did not quit those two jobs, of course. Now I have so much more time for myself. I have so much more time to, you know, hang with my family and friends. Well, I don't really got that much friends, but, um, and a lot of people may think that, you know, Amazon FBA is another job. It is, but it's like, you honestly, like it's way better than having a nine to five and working for someone. Else. And a lot of people don't understand that, but that's just not for some people. A lot of people don't mind having a nine to five, which I understand, but like, not me, not me. Okay, so consistency is really important. Okay, so next thing that actually made me make more sales not make me more sales, but make me a larger amount of sales in a day or like a smaller period of time is finding products that sell way higher on Amazon. So I know that's the whole business, but let me explain myself. So let's say for instance, you are selling grocery products and you're making like three, $4 profit off of each because usually grocery products, you know, go for around, they range, but like 15, 20, $30 maybe on Amazon. But what I started doing was looking for products that sell higher on Amazon, like let's say $75 pair of sweatpants, $100 pair of shoes. It's way easier to make like $500 sales a day if you have higher profitable and higher selling items rather than you know grocery products. So let's say for instance, I can make like $500 in one day in sales by you know selling like three or four pairs of Nike shoes from the outlets that cost me like, you know, $50, $60 to buy. And with groceries, if I were to sell, you know, groceries, instead of higher selling items, I would have to sell like at least 50 units 
maybe less maybe more but you have to you know keep up with the volume if you're trying to get to a certain level and you're trying to you know make a lot a day a week a month a year then you kind of want to you know look into you know higher selling items there is more risk in it because you are selling it high but that's also because you bought it high as well most of the time the higher profit margin is going to be where like let's say i have a pair of nike sweatpants that i bought for 40 dollars and selling on my amazon for 80 and you guys may think you know who's gonna buy those products so expensive on amazon there is people out there i'm telling you guys it's the convenience for them so you don't want to go with that mindset of like mm, i don't want to put my price at this because who would buy it at this price there's certain data and analytics that we sellers have to look at to make sure that we're not price gouging our products a lot of people may well a lot of people may say um we're not price gouging we're not scalpers like this is what it's already selling on Amazon. I'm just hopping on the listing. And I'm also talking about that because I recently came out with a little post on my little um, Instagram page. And there was just mad haters, mad haters talking about, you know, should have left some on the shelf. Why would people buy from you when they can buy from the store? Like it, it was just a lot, but I love the haters because of the engagement. It really boosts everything up. If you are a hater, comment down below. Make sure to like it up. Try not to dislike because I don't think that would look good on the algorithm. But just, you know, comment down below your opinions and stuff like that. And then, you know, maybe I'll get to you. Maybe I won't and just, you know, laugh out loud on my phone. But, you know, let's get back to it. And that's one of the main things that helped me scale my business. I started selling, you know, higher profitable items, higher selling items. And of course, in the beginning, when you are a beginner, you don't want to touch the higher selling items because it's more riskier. Now, if you have you know, 100% chance or 100% knowledge in this business and you are ready to go, then why not? Why not do it, you know? The third thing I wanna tell you guys is volume. So let's say for instance, you are, you know, purchasing grocery products from Walmart and you resell them on Amazon and the test order sells and everything like that. You wanna make sure that you're actually going to be able to restock on those products. I know sometimes it's like a quick profit here and there because it's not only on the clearance, but it's not never gonna be on the clearance again. You wanna try and make sure that you can restock on certain items. So try and find products that you can restock on and not just, you know, buy and and sell and delete off your listing you you want to restock on items and i have a lot of items that i already keep in mind when i am walking into stores doing retail arbitrage like let's say for instance i go to nike all the time and there's these pair of white socks i'm not going to say the exact pair of white socks but these white socks they sell for me all the time and every time i go to that store they have thousands and thousands not thousands i'm, I'm exaggerating but they have like hundreds of socks right and usually they have a limit on um, you can only buy like five of something or ten of something sometimes so i just make sure anytime that i am walking into a nike outlet i keep in mind the first thing i do is find the first products that i already know are selling and that's why it's super important to keep track of what you sold out of what you, you know what's in high demand in your inventory so always think about the volume and not just you know I can make this little bucks profit and then I'll just delete it off my inventory. Those products are good too, especially if they're like higher profitable products, but like you keep, you wanna keep up with the market, you wanna keep up with the inventory and volume. And also since Amazon is gonna now be charging a low volume fee, I don't know, low inventory fee, probably when this video posts, it's probably gonna be out. That's what we have to do where Amazon sellers were selling on their platform. So yeah, so just keep up with volume for sure. So the fourth thing that I wanted to tell you guys is to switch up your sourcing methods. If you aren't able to successfully look for a good amount of products, you're probably that sourcing method that you're doing, it's probably not for you. So just switch it up. You don't always have to stick with retail arbitrage. You can tap into online arbitrage, see how you like it better or vice versa. Let's say for instance, you're doing a lot of storefront stocking and other products that you are, you know, buying, getting shipped to you are currently tanking because everyone else is finding it doing storefront stocking, try manual sourcing and i have a manual sourcing tutorial on my youtube channel and every other sourcing types of course because i give out free game here all the time what i would recommend is to you know try different ways of sourcing don't just do the same routes because if you're doing the same routes and you're not finding any success or anything like that there's a problem there's a problem and you gotta fix it you gotta you know change things up change things up to see what works best for you for i would say 80 percent i did oa in my first year selling on amazon and i really did not do a lot of retail arbitrage if you were to ask me a few months ago which sourcing method is best honestly i would have said online arbitrage but at the same time it's you just gotta 
see what works best for you. A lot of people do not like going into the physical stores and scanning things. I personally don't mind it, so that's why I personally like retail arbitrage more. In the beginning, I was doing a lot of retail arbitrage, but then I shifted like straight into online because I was just starting to get a little lazy. But you know, I'm not really lazy when it comes to making money outside and going to actual physical stores. So yeah, just make sure to switch up your methods, do manual sourcing, storefront stocking, reverse sourcing, basically what it is, or retail arbitrage. So those type of sourcing methods are online and then you can also do physical retail arbitrage. Okay, so last thing I wanted to tell you guys is to make sure to check on your listings. This is a really important thing that you have to do if you want to be successful and make six figures in your first year as a beginner Amazon seller. So you want to make sure whenever you're shipping products out to Amazon, if they're not selling, you're gonna wanna you know change your prices, maybe use a repricer like BQ or any other software, but you kind of want to make sure to check on your listings every day or every other day because you know the market fluctuates all the time and the sales that you're going to make is really depends and is based off of your price and how competitive you are in the market. So you always kind of have to be competitive. So that's why it's really important to check up on your listings. And that's one thing that I did not do as a beginner in the beginning phases, in the first two months. I just, you know, I found products that were profitable and they were great. I shipped them out to Amazon. I wasn't really making much sales, only like, you know, little, little sales here and there. And if you see that they are not making sales, you probably did something wrong. You probably didn't look at a certain data. You probably forgot to look at a certain data or the market is just fluctuating it's going up it's going down and but that's why it's really important to look into the keeper graph for the price history of the chart because you kind of want it to be steady you know a steady pink line if you guys don't know how to read a keeper graph make sure to go to my tutorials down below on my channel but you just want to make sure that you are priced competitively all the time and that's why i said i did start using this repricer called bq they basically reprice my items stay competitively in the market but then they also ask you what's the lowest that you would want your price to be and what's the max so then you don't you know they don't reprice the software doesn't reprice your listing to something you're not even and profitable at so just make sure to keep up with your listings please 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 keep up with your listings okay so that's it for today's video i just want to do a short little sit down talk video with you guys so then it can motivate you to actually start your amazon business and to not get discouraged I literally did six figures like i said in my first year as a beginner which i did not know i would ever do and these are little things that i have implemented in my business to make sure i get those high you know those high sales those goals being reached and stuff like that so if you haven't already make sure to like it up if you learn anything new in this video make sure to subscribe down below and if you haven't already make sure to follow my instagram and my tiktok where i post on those every single day and check out my second youtube channel i basically do just little lifestyle vlogs here and there i did promise you guys once i get to a thousand subscribers on that youtube channel jazz hustles vlogs i'm going to do an ebook giveaway for each video for one person so make sure to subscribe to my second channel i'll leave the link somewhere over here and if you got to the end of this video Video, comment the word hustle down below so I know you're serious about this business but that's pretty much it with this video I just also wanted to remind you guys that I'm coming out with my new course program course slash coaching program and I'm super excited for it I already started shooting it it's gonna literally be the best course out there and if you guys are interested make sure to stay tuned I'm most likely going to be able to finish by the end of April but if not sooner I will let you guys know of that but thank you guys so much for watching I love you guys love you hustlers and stay safe out there I'll see you guys on the next Next one. Peace. I better find your loving. I better find your heart. I better find your loving. I better find your heart. I better find your loving.